Hello everyone and welcome to the conclusion of the principal movie. Now, I'm, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that I took that long. Um, uh, the master's thesis has entered a more intensive phase now. Where I really need to work on it for 30 to 40 hours a week. I have also uh, having a bit of a cold and you know the new term has kicked in and I'm concerning myself this term with general relativity and this is a lot more mathematical than the things I usually do so I'm I'm having a hard time doing all of the exercises and following the lectures. Um, none of that is important right now so let's talk about the principal movie. This presentation is divided in two sections. First of all I would like to talk about the methods or like the things around and in the movie and the way they did it because I think that a lot of them were rather poorly. I'll first of all talk about the experts then I talk about the quotes the message and then later we briefly talk about the conspiracy thing um, and then I will be talking about the science this will be a separate video because it's not quite done yet I will now talk about all of the methods by the way on the picture on the right here you have a uh, a picture that I took with my small telescope from the moon and it's really nice. I put it there so it's not boring to look at. First of all, the experts. Julian Babor. I will pronounce all of the names wrongly at some point and I do apologize. Um, he has a PhD in mathematics talking about the mathematical side of general relativity, right? Differential geometry essentially. He is, as far as I can tell, not a researcher. He works part-time as a translator uh, however, he has a few ideas about physics, first of all, timeless physics, in which he essentially says that time is, a, is an assumption, or like time is the, only has the illusion of passing, which would be interesting if it wasn't completely minute, right? Um, I, I have read a bit about this, and the main criticism that I could find, like from a more physics side of it, and I agree with it, is that it doesn't really help in any way it's it's not useful it doesn't make predictions that are different from the predictions that the normal model makes right so um, he's he also is a staunch defender of Mackian physics uh, which you know is fine however he has never published uh, any sort of research paper in that area so you know not really a person I would see qualified to talk a lot about cosmology especially if you're claiming to to essentially dismantle all of established cosmology. Next person, John Hartman. John Hartman, he has a PhD in physics, is a young earth creationist. Uh, the physics he does uh, can be divided into two general sections. First of all, he concerns himself with the development of detectors and like the the more technical instrumental side behind radio astronomy. And he also dabbles a bit in general relativity that does not require dark matter. Um, first of all, all of the science that I found of him seems to be sound and peer-reviewed. And it has nothing to do with geocentrism whatsoever, mind you. But um, I'd like to talk about the general relativity without dark matter, because I've never heard of this, that, that there's a special kind of space-time that you can think of that is five dimensional and has a fifth component called space velocity and it seems fine and it, it manages to uh, do uh, it was specifically created to to get rid of dark matter so to speak um, I have not found any reliable uh, uh, source that talks much about it or about its successes or failures so it is a very very niche thing um, from what I could gather he was able to explain a few observations without dark matter that in the standard model if you will uh, uh, requires a bit of dark matter however not a lot so so really that the thing that I'm getting from this is he he this is an uh, uh, I think that this is what's going on I'm not saying that that is what's going on I believe that uh, he looks he, he, he decided looks at observations where the margins of error are big enough to explain him away without dark matter this is what I personally believe that he does. If he doesn't, that's fine. I'm very open to the possibility of dark matter not existing. As I mentioned in the video, this is only the idea that we have. We are pretty certain it should be there, but if someone comes up here and is able to explain all of the observations without any dark matter, 
absolutely fine by me. And if, if, if this five dimensional space time space velocity thing is the way to go there, then more power to him, right? So he gets a semi pass. He is definitely not neutral on the subject since he's a young earth creationist, right? That means actively denying <laughs> and ignoring pieces of evidence in order to, to uh, uh, protect your belief. So he doesn't get a pass, but he gets half a pass in the sense that the science I could find of him was peer reviewed and generally accepted to be fine. However, I should also note I only found like six papers of the guy and like two were about this general activity thing, but not important. Bernard Carr. He's a professor of mathematics and astronomy. He is active in teaching. He, I have not found any publications of him, ever. He is not a uh, creationist. He's also not a geocentrist, so why have him in the movie at all? It's always nice if your experts disagree with you after the movie, right? Because you cut it in a way that it seems that they agree. Talk about that later. <laughs> also, I'm... I'm curious about how he can be a professor of mathematics and teaching astronomy. Probably like mathematical concepts for astronomers, whatever. Max Tegmark was previously unknown to me before the movie. I later found out that he's actually really one of the top researchers for relativity. Um, he has over 200 papers, some of which have over 500 uh, citations, and that is quite a lot, right? Um, he's not a creationist, neither is he a geocentrist, and he had a little quote when asked about his, his the, the movie, and he said that I totally disavow that silly agenda, the agenda referring to geocentrism. Um, so because that, that, that's the whole story about that, right? I, I linked it in the description with every episode. I will link it again. That the 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 maker of this movie, like the, the, the producers of this movie, tricked all of those people to appear in a documentary and then they cut it together with their fake experts so that they make, seem, make it seem credible and make their fake experts seem more credible. Talk about that in a bit. Um, John Bile. He has a PhD in astronomy. Strangely, is a mathematician. Now, where I come from, in our education and university system, that's not possible. You can't be a mathematician but hold a PhD in astronomy. To me, that doesn't make sense. It may be standard, as far as I can tell in a lot of other countries. Where I come from, that's not a thing. When you're a mathematician, you get your PhD in maths. When you're an astronomer, you get your PhD in astronomy, and that's that. But, you know, that's just personal confusion. That's had nothing to do with about him. I could not find any research papers of the guy, so he's definitely not a researcher. Uh, he's also a creationist, so that diminishes his uh, credibility, at least to me, quite a lot. George Ellis. George Ellis is a professor for mathematics. He also has a PhD. He's actually an expert in the mathematical side behind cosmology. I didn't know that. Um, he is not a creationist. He's also not a geocentrist. I couldn't find much of like academia from the guy. He's he he appears to be in a lot of uh, documentaries, you know, like like Michio Kaku and Lawrence Krauss. Which, by the way, I won't be talking about Michio Kaku and Lawrence Krauss because you know, I I know that they are research scientists and they are like the scientific work is not all too important, but it's definitely sound. It's fair. It's peer reviewed. Right. That's it. So I'm, I I I don't talk about those in the presentation. Um, yeah, so, again, not a geocentrist. That's good in a geocentrist movie. Now, I'd like to come to my favorite experts. Robert Bennett. Uh, I couldn't find much about him. He's claiming to have a PhD in physics. I literally couldn't find anything about the guy, except for a, for a Young Earth Creationist website, which I won't believe anything from. I didn't find any papers. I believe he's a, he's a creationist from what I read about him on the creationist website. And he's co-author of the book with Roberts and Janice, which already tells you anything. I do not believe that this person has any business talking about cosmology. Martin Celebrator. Se se however, sorry again. <sighs> now, he's not a scientist. He's a theologian. He's the vice president of a Christian extreme right institute, which is classified as a hate, hate group by the uh, uh, southern, what do you call it, uh, southern thingy for poverty. Ah, you know what I mean, right? So, probably a horrible person, a horrible institute. Remember the name, the Calchon Foundation, horrible thing. Um, 
has fundamentally no business talking about cosmology at all. Like none, zero, nada. Ron Hatch, he is a GPS technician. He has a PhD, uh, not a PhD, Jesus, a bachelor's in physics and mathematics. However, I believe that he may have found those at the bottom of a cereal box um, because, first of all, he claims that GPS reveals problems with special relativity, which is hilariously funny. Um, I tried to read his papers. Nowhere are they actually public. They are, as far as I can tell, behind a paywall. Um, and the things that he claims are so fundamentally unsubstantiated. If GPS revealed problems with special relativity, how come that a lot of the corrections that are made with satellites come from special relativity? Ridiculous to me. He was also in the movie trying to explain or interpret the results of the Michelson-Morley experiment, which is absolutely ghastly. Now, you see, we have in the second term, in the second term of the bachelor's where I study, we have experimental electrodynamics and, and optics, where we talk a bit about like the basics of electronics and optics. And there we, not with the Michelson-Morley experiment, but they explain to us how a Michelson interferometer works, which is the kind of, of interferometer they used in the Michelson-Morley experiment. Now, had this person any fundamental understanding of how it worked, he would laugh and be ashamed of himself about what he said that the, Michael, that the, that the result of the Michelson-Morley experiment would be, because the things he explained, the way he explained it, are not possible to detect with a Michelson interferometer. I'll talk about the whole science part in another video. He has fundamentally no business talking about cosmology. The fact that he has a bachelor's in physics hurts me to the core because he has clearly no clue about it. And now, the, 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 the reason why I'm here, essentially, is that, that guy that I recently found out that we watched the YouTube videos on his channel, um, Robertson Janis, I believe is pronounced, he's a theologian. He's not a doctor, by the way. He claims to have a PhD. However, this is from a non-accredited religious extreme like thing you, you know that all of the create a bunch of the creationists do that Kenthoven does it too and he's not a PhD <laughs> he's a theologian has no business about talking about cosmology he's a creationist he's not a scientist in any way and he's responsible for the whole mess and the tricking people to think that he's actually an expert quite a few times in the movie uh, when, when when he sits there and talks about things at in, in the same fashion that the real experts talk about things that's just there to make him seem more credible. He interviewed himself for his own movie to make him seem credible. If I did anything of the sort for a project at university, I would not get a passing grade of any kind, right? Now, the strategy behind all of the experts, right? First, you let the scientists say some basics or some historical entry, like something like that. Then you make a point about how, you know, geocentrism could come into that and you let a non-expert tell the conclusion or the interpretation of an experiment or you refer to conspiracy because that's always nice. And then it seems that because the real scientist has told you the basics and it fits in because, you know, the biggest lie is the one that has a bit of truth in it. Right. And that's the, that, that, that's the best lie. Right. Um, and so that that's what they do here, really. Um, and that, that's the, the cycle that they go through all of the subjects and pretty much fail to say anything of substance when you look at it from a scientific perspective. Um, and now my favorite part, the quotes. Oh my God, the quotes, I love them. I have four points here. First of all, and this is my favorite point, they cut off a quote from uh, Michelson, right? Saying the, because it actually says the opposite of what they want to say. That's straight up lie. I, I can't, this is in no way is that tolerable in any context. I have here in the bit, in the lighter white here, is the quote that they gave in the movie, which is this conclusion directly contradicts the explanation, which presupposes that the earth moves. <laughs> and they cut off through 
the ether. <laughs> this conclusion directly contradicts the explanation. We can leave that part out, that is mostly a historical thing, right? Of the phenomenon of aberration, because you no know, light would be aberrated if the ether, blah, 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 blah. This conclusion directly contradicts the explanation, which presupposes that the Earth moves through the ether. That's the relevant quote here, right? They cut it off. That's like the Lawrence quote, where he says uh, that for a brief time uh, everything appeared as if it was ad it addressed. I believe, as far as I can tell, is fine. However, the problem is the context in which Lawrence said that quote. I could not find anywhere. I could not find it being attributed specifically to the michelson morley experiment it might as well be with anything else so that quote doesn't really say anything because the context is unknown um then the classical quote of einstein i i which yeah you know einstein came to the conclusion that the the motion of earth could not be determined by any optical thingamajig when in the same sentence he says but the earth revolves around the sun um which in principle is is fine, right? You know, because because you can't do that with a single optical experiment on on Earth. That's not that's not the thing. You can do it with a whole bunch of experiments that are not necessarily optic in space and on Earth. So you know, there, there's a whole thing about that in the flat Earth, like uh, <laughs> in the flat Earth circles, if you will. There, I'm sure that if you watch like a few videos on flat Earth, that quote and the, the refutation of it pops up somewhere and also i have linked in previous episodes about how they misinterpret a bunch of quotes from edwin hubble which are apparently misquoted very frequently in this fashion by creationists which i love right so really the quotes at best two of them support what they're saying and two of them completely contradicted the way i would see it is michelson contradicts them lawrence as far as I can tell, doesn't have anything to do with the movie. The quote from Einstein, if they read it further, disagrees with them and at best is neutral because you say we can't detect them. That doesn't mean that it's not moving around it. The absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. And the Hubble quote is neutral at best, really. So, horrible job there. And now I'd like to talk about the message and the conspiracy thing behind it, right? Um, first of all, the clear message for me behind it is, well, God did it, right? God put us somewhere, all of the creationists and theologians are there. If you need to invoke God for your model, it's probably a bad model. Um, the next message is, well, science is evil, <laughs> and, and scientists don't stick to their own science, and, and, and the things that scientists tell you is not science. This is there to, to really get you into a conspiracy mindset, right? They probably sell you something or they want to, in, in, in case of a lot of churches, they want you to go to their church and donate stuff there, right? That, that's why people say things like that. Absolute nonsense. And in the end, you turn to conspiracy, my all-time favorite. The thing you turn to when you don't have arguments, conspiracy. <laughs> and on the right-hand side here, I, have, I, I brought with me the 11 characteristics, the 11 important characteristics of pseudoscience, right? I'd like to go through them in regards to the movie and the geocentrist thingy. Is it unfalsifiable? Yeah. I gave them a kind of eh here because, well, nowhere in the movie is it presented as if the geocentrist picture was unfalsifiable, and I don't think that they think that it is. The problem is a bigger thing because God is very much unfalsifiable, right? So, not really science. But I'm giving it when you strictly stick to the geocentrist thing, I'd give them a, a pass on that one, I believe, if I'm generous. Two, relies heavily on anecdotes, personal experiences and testimonials. Why they had all of those things in the movie, geocentrism does not rely heavily on anecdotes, or the movie didn't rely heavily on anecdotes, personal experience and testimonials. So that's fine. Three, cherry pick. Yes, <laughs> a lot. The comforting evidence, the confirming evidence, well, ignoring, minimizing, disconfirming evidence. They are very much guilty of that. I showed that with the quotes. Um, I'm, they also didn't talk about things like uh, uh, radio telescopes needing, like uh, when, when I measure with my radio telescope, I will make a movie about that. I don't have a radio telescope. I have access to one at the university. 
if I measure with the radio telescope, I can directly measure the 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 what you call it the tang the tangential velocity of Earth, like of the, of of the self rotation of Earth, you know, when Earth spinning really, and I can also directly measure the um, orbital velocity of Earth around the Sun. I can measure both of these things. I will make a video how you can do that and what the results were back in like I believe it was 2020 when we did that because a fun thing every student at our university has to do that at some point that's a, a, a set point in there in, in like the education path that you need to take in the in the basic astronomical like hands-on session you need to do that so you know not looking good like either for geocentrism or flat earth, flat earth. None of, that, that's one of the more funny things that nowhere in this movie do they say that the earth is flat. I believe that all of the individuals in the movie would disagree with the very notion that the earth could conceivably be flat unless they're theologians, but they have no idea. Um, great, let's, let's move on. Uh, uses technobabble. Not that I could think of, no. I mean, it uses technobabble in the sense that it but that's not really a techno babble. It's they, they use technical terms, right? And that's fine. Science in science, technical terms, ob obviously fine. Five lacks plausible mechanism. Yes, very much. <sighs> they say a lot of the times that oh, you know, we could view the Earth as as as, uh, as stationary, and that and 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 in principle you can, but only from an observational standpoint, not from a physical one. You could create a model in which the Earth is at the center and things m revolve. Like the sun revolves around us and things revolve around the sun. That's fine. You could model it in that way in order to make predictions about the positions. That's fine. But physics wouldn't explain how that happened. There is no mechanism behind how that would happen. So, yes, it very much lacks plausible mechanism. Is unchanging? I don't know. I, I feel like I should give him a yes for that one. It is unchanging because essentially all they're doing is denying the historical advances that we have made in that area. Um, but 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 they haven't strictly mentioned it that it, it is that like that the geocentrist model has been true for like however long and that it's unchanging. They didn't specifically mention that, so I'm I'm being generous and I'm giving that them a nah for that one, right? Um, point seven makes extraordinary exaggerated claims with insufficient evidence. Do I need to even explain that one? Of course they do. We're at the center of the universe. They have no evidence. By the way, I asked my university professor for the 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 ring structure thing with Sloan Digital Sky Survey. He says that he's never heard of it and that when he looks at the data, that that's not what he sees. Just saying. Um, <laughs> Uh, point eight, it professes, they profess certainty. Well, I don't know, really. I haven't heard them talk about real proof in the scientific sense about it. Uh, also, no great con, I mean, they talk about it with great confidence, but I don't think they say proof. Again, I'm being generous here. Most people would probably have said yes. I'm giving him a eh on that one. Um, nine, commits logical fallacies. Yes quite a few non secretors things like that there, there, there were quite a lot of them there um lacks peer review of course it lacks peer review it's geocentrism the only like what one of the the websites that i've stumbled upon when researching for all of this was a website that's like beyond mainstream science which which is like not science then anymore right but you know um so yes 10 yes 11 Claims there's conspiracy to suppress their ideas. Yes. Yes, very much so. Very, very, very much so they claim that there's a conspiracy. So with that, I'm done talking about the methods. The next video, hopefully, will be about the science and how they misunderstand slash lie about the science. And after that, I hope that I will be done for. I will make one extra video where I talk about how I, like, I'm not doing anything in specific. I will just go for a few flat earth points that I repeatedly hear. And without trying to do so, just in my normal education kind of path, how 
I disproved a whole bunch of them without even knowing that I am disproving anything because it's just a thing that you know you 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 have on your <laughs> on your instruction sheet you have the things to do and the measurements from that directly result in 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 uh, uh, disproving a whole bunch of about the flat Earth without me at the time even knowing that people actually think the flat is the, 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 <laughs> the flat is Earth exactly no that the Earth is flat out there so uh, you know with that. Thank you a whole bunch for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Please feel free to do all the things that you do on YouTube, and have a nice day.